We are meeting today for a social call in her shoes, um, produced by Women in Power and Change, purpose to really get in there and really highlight on three major areas that really enable the change we're really trying to see in our lives, right? So the first, our first segment is vision. It is so important to have the vision, um, have a vision for your life because that's kind of like your roadmap, your blueprint as far as in where do you see yourself going? Um, what do you see yourself doing? And what kind of impact do you really want to have? And then we're gonna move into ambition because we know just as good as ambition, vision is, ambition is also important. That's, a, that's really kind of like your, your engine, the engine that really revs you into the vision, keeps you going, keeps you moving forward. And then we're gonna talk about business confidence. Now, having the vision and being ambition, ambitious um, you need that confidence to kind of like seal the deal. So I want to welcome to the stage. I want to welcome to the stage a lovely speaker. She's going to talk about vision, Miss Lavanya Tryon. Hello, hello. How y'all doing? Good morning. I'm super, super excited to be here. Super excited to be talking about vision, which is one of my favorite topics because I truly believe that without a vision, we perish. And so I want to talk about that today. So I'm going to jump right in. Let me start sharing my screen. Oh, uh, Shantae, can you give permission to share my screen? Okay, perfect. And are you all seeing my PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So what I wanna talk about today is you will see what you say. And that is so important for us to understand that you will see what you say. Meaning if you say it, if you speak it, then you can see it and you can see it come to pass in your life. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through that. My name is Lavanya Tryon. I am an author, an entrepreneur, a certified counselor and a motivator. My goal is to mentor and to, to, to see people actualize their lives into what they really want, want it to be. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So we're going to talk about vision casting. Vision casting is intentional. So I'm going to ask you all a question. When you think of your next five years, what do you see? So take 30 seconds and think about five years from now. So it's 2021, January. In January 2026, where do you see yourself? So take um, 30 seconds to see that. If you have um, a pen and paper, write it down and cast that vision of where you want to see yourself in five years. And then once you get there, once you get that vision, and it could be um, for any area of your life, it can be relationships, it can be finances, it can be career and work. But when you get that vision of where you want to be in five years, what is your plan to get there? Do you actually have a plan to get there? And that's a lot. That's very important because many of us have a desire and have a dream of where we want to go, but we don't necessarily have a plan and steps on how to get there. So I want to, to take that time to focus today on those areas. So there's a quote by Zig Ziglar that I absolutely love. It says, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time, every single time. If you do not have a target, you will never hit it. A lot of times in life, we have a goal, we have a vision, we have something that we want, but we don't necessarily know um, how to get there. I was listening to a sermon at one point and um, there was, they were talking about when um, Jesus approached a blind man and he asked the blind man, what do you want? And he turned it around and said, if Jesus was to ask you today, if you were asked, if a person was to ask you today, what do you want? Would you be able to clearly define what that was that you wanted from that person or from that area in your life? And if you can't do that, then you will settle for whatever you get. You will go along with the status quo. You will go along with whatever is whatever comes your way. You will, will be willing to accept because you don't really have a vision for what you want in your life. 
where there is no vision, the people perish, which means cast off restraint. And um, I be- really truly believe I am a believer and, and my faith is what really motivates me. And I do believe that if any point in your life, if you can't see the end goal, and even if you're not a believer, if you can't see the end goal of where you're going, um, you're going to stumble. You're going to be discouraged. You're going to be all over the place. I know for uh, many of us that we're, we're business women or we're entrepreneurs or we work in corporate America. And if we don't have a task list or a to-do list, sometimes we'll get started on one thing and then something else will come up and then we'll get started on another thing. And then something else will come up and we'll get started on another thing, right sisters? And that's what happens. And so we get pulled in all of these directions. We're mothers and then we're wives and then we're a businesswoman, And then we're, um, we, we have to take care of our family. And if we don't have a vision for what our life needs to look like, then we will end up living our lives for someone else. So in the next few minutes, I promise you three things. I promise you will gain clarity on clearing the clogs in your vision. I promise you will understand and begin to define WGLL. And I'm going to tell you exactly what WGLL stands for. And you will receive clear tips on how to get where you are going. Okay. If you have any questions or you have any comments, you can feel free to you know post those in the chat for me as well. So vision. In this um, graphic on the screen, you see a V with a space, a S, a space, a, a O, and an N. What's missing? Any of us that that <laughs> that know how to spell, that know how know what's going on in this this visual, I. I'm missing out of this. And that's what happens in our vision. I'm missing out of my vision. I don't have necessarily a vision, a clear vision for myself. So I'm the thing that's that's holding my vision up. That's the clog that needs to be cleared is I need to clearly define what I want for myself. So identity must come before purpose. So once you figure out who you are, and whose you are, then once you get your identity established, then you can define your purpose. So now I know who I am. Next, I need to know what I'm purpose to do. What's my goal in life? What's my vision for life? And then once you get your identity established and your purpose defined, your vision will be unstoppable. So the you I see versus the me I want to be. Okay, so that's saying there what we portray to the world and the me that we want to be sometimes is incongruent. Sometimes we have a little bit of cognitive cognitive dissonance in there, meaning that I want to be this person. I want to display this person. I want to showcase the certain person to the world, but I don't know how to get there. So the you that you the you that I see or the you that you see the me that you see is different than the me that I want to be. So what I have here, um, and you'll you'll be getting these these slides after the presentation. But what I have here is a few personality tests, and I love personality tests because I feel like personality tests tell us what exactly we're struggling in, what exactly areas that we're strong in, what areas, what ticks, what makes us tick, what things and things that we can improve. So there's an Enneagram um, personality test. There is a Myers-Briggs personality test. And then there's the big five personality test. All of these tests have free portions on there. Now you can pay if you want to get the complete report, but they're free portions. And then because of faith and values are very important to me, I have a spiritual gift test and a core values test. And I believe that if you take time to give yourself um, some moments to take these and then take the results and take the ideas that comes out of that, I believe that you will begin to start seeing a clearer vision for your identity and for who you are right now. And then those areas that you want to fix as well. So WGLL, what good looks like? Okay. So what does good look like in your life? If you were to say, I have a good life, I have great finances, I have a great marriage, I have a great parenting relationship. If you were to say that, what would be the steps, what would be the things that would tick off that box under that? That's what good looks like for you. When you decide and determine what you want good and great to look like in your life, then you can start to actualize those things. So take the areas in your life that you need clear vision for, whether it's family, friends, relationships, business, career, finance, saving, retirement, any of those kind of areas that you want. These only work if they matter to you. 
Someone else can tell you that you should work on this area of your life. But if you don't feel like that's an area that needs to be improved, or if you don't feel like that's an area that is actually um, at the forefront of what you want in that time frame, then it's not going to be an area to improve. I use the example, I don't have children. So being a good mother is not what good looks like for me right now, because I don't, that's not an area that I'm working on, but being an entrepreneur is being a businesswoman is being an author and, um, and, and building a platform. Those are things that I want to figure out what good looks like for me. So remember vision has to be personalized. It has to be individualized. If you don't have a vision for your life, you will accept anyone else's. So once you get the vision of what good looks like for you, you may not know the steps of how to get to good. So let's talk about those steps. So vision casting. What does vision casting look like? So there's three different areas that I use for vision casting. And when I use, I use, I want, I can, and I have statements. Okay. So each statement has a caveat to that statement. So the first one is I want, so I will. So define what you want and what you will do to get it. So if I want to be a millionaire, if I want to be, to make six figures for this, this year, I want to make seven figure figures for next year. So I will, what are my bullet points? What will I do there? I will market, I will research, I will put out a product that people may not even know they need, but they desire and they want. So that's what I want. And this is what I will do. So I want, so I will. The next one is I can, if I do. So this is another caveat statement. I can have this. I can do this if I do this. So I can go back to school if I register for classes starting in the spring and take advantage of some of all these credits and free classes that are going on due to corona. So I can if I do. So define what you want to accomplish. And uh, if you do these certain things, how you will get there. And the last one is I have and I need. And I love this one because it practices gratitude. So I have, the first statement is, what do I already have in my toolbox? What do I already have in in my resource kit that I can use? And now what do I need to get to my next step? So if I have peace, what do I need? I need to maintain that piece. If I have a business plan, what do I need? I need sponsors and investors. If I have a message, what do I need? I need people that will that need that message. I need to be in front of those people. That's how you vision cast. I want, I can, I have. Then you, um, another area that you can vision cast is was creating a vision board or a life plan. But I always say, hold that loosely, okay? The worst thing that we can do is create a vision or a life plan for ourselves. And then life throws us a pivot. Life throws us a curveball, and we refuse to pivot pivot. We refuse to, we stay on this one path and we say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to have. A prime example for me, I can use as experience. When I graduated from my master's program, I graduated from my master's program, was getting ready to buy a townhouse. I was offered a really good job. So what did I think? I thought the next step in my life was marriage. So I was going to marry the next person that was, that liked me that wanted to let marry me. So I was in the process of getting ready to marry a guy who I didn't love simply because I thought that was the next stage in my life because I had a life plan that I was not willing to let go of. And if we're holding something tightly in our fist, then we don't have room to receive what really is for us in our life. So I say create a vision board and a life plan because you need to cast the vision of where you wanna go. But I say, hold it loosely because how many of us know nobody planned for a Rona? in 2020, right? No one planned for a global pandemic to shut the world down. So if you had such a clear and a structured and a, I'm going to hold this tight and this is exactly what I'm going to do for my vision and for my life in 2020, and then March hit, then you would have been somewhere sitting in a corner sucking your thumb because you could not have handled it. So that's why I say create a vision board and a life plan of where you want to go, but hold it loosely and be ready to pivot if it doesn't look the way you want it to look. I still have a target. I still have an aim. Sometimes my direction may be a little different. Okay, so what do you want to accomplish this year? What are the things you have that you want to accomplish in the next one to two to five years? Set a time frame. Because how many of us know when we make, we make a vague goal, I'm going to get in shape. 
Well, what does that mean? I worked out today. I'm going to have cookies tomorrow, right? Like we don't put forth an actual plan for how we're going to get there. So I want us to make sure that we have a clear cut view of where we want and what we want to accomplish in that time frame. And then how do you envision your future? What do you want your future to look like? So um, two different ways that you can create a life plan or a vision board. One, I use canva.com. If you're electronic and you like um, things visually there, you can do that as well. Um, but if you're also like me, you're, you're old school. So I have a, a vision board that's on a three, uh, three-sided display folder. And I have that as my vision as well. And I use good old fashioned magazines, pictures, tape, and glue. So whatever you need to do to see that and then place it in an area that you're gonna go to every day, whether that's in front of your um, bedroom, whether it's in, um, in your, um, your quiet space, that you have a quiet space that you take time for yourself, wherever that is that you're gonna see it daily, place it there so that way you're able to look at it. On my kitchen, on my um, refrigerator, I have a picture of a yellow polka dotted bikini because that is my next photo shoot when I turn 40, okay? So I have a picture on that of my, of my, on my refrigerator because that's a vision, I'm casting a vision. So I know that when I go into that refrigerator, I'm either gonna make a choice to get me closer to that vision or a choice that's gonna take me away from it. And so that's what we have to do in order to get a clear vision of what we want in our lives. Okay. Our next one. Let's see. is an upline, a downline, and a sideline. And we're almost done, ladies. I just wanted to kind of give you this. What is an upline, a downline, and a sideline? So I truly believe that what you are attracted to in someone else is often a characteristic found in, in, in yourself. So if you love someone's loyalty, like I love Shantae's business, um, her business attitude and her mentality, mentality and her tenacity. So I love that about her. And the reason I love that about her is because I have that too. So I see in her something that I see in myself and that makes us kindred spirits, right? So, but also on the flip side, what you are turned off about in someone is often Often a characteristic found in yourself. So that thing that your child does that annoys the mess out of you is probably what you used to do to your mama as well, right? And so that thing that your husband does that 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 just works your just irks you and just makes you be like, oh, where did you come from? Like, why are you breathing like that? That that very thing, something in that is something that is in you as well. So we have to be able to recognize that and say, this person isn't the problem. Remember, the only person that you can change in life is what? Me, right? You can only change yourself. So every person and every vision needs an upline, a downline, and a sideline, okay? What is an upline? An upline is a mentor. An upline is a counselor, a therapist, a pastor, a spiritual advisor, a business um coach or guru. That's an upline. That's someone that is directly and intentionally pouring into my life. So they're my upline. They're pouring down into me. And then my downline, who am I pouring into? Who am I intentionally pouring and giving of myself to? So am I a mentor? Am I coaching people? Am I bringing alongside women? What Shantae is doing right now, these she's creating intentional downlines as she's pouring into women through her organization. And then what's a sideline? Sideline are these people that we're running along this race with, right? The sidelines are the people that I can grab hold to and that when I'm tired, when I'm discouraged, when my vision doesn't look like it should have looked, like I thought it should look and it's taking longer, I can grab a hold of someone that is wrong, running alongside of me and I can use their strength as well in that time frame. So that's what an upline, a downline, and a sideline is. And ladies, if you don't take anything else from this, this talk, make sure that you intentionally narrow down who those people are in your lives and that you clearly narrow down their, their roles and your role in their life and you secure those because we all need each other to get through this. And then I keep my promises to you. So I made three promises to you that you would gain clarity on what is clogging your life. I made the promise that you would find out what WGLL stands for. And then I would give you clear tips on how to get where you're going. So I kept my promises. Do you keep your promises to yourself? Make a commitment to yourself and then follow through with it. So what I want you to do is on a piece of paper later or today or right now, take it and say I and then write your full name. And then 
figure out these four steps. I declare that I will, what is my vision action? So what will I do? Starting, what is my begin date? So when will I start it? To accomplish, what is the goal of that? By end date. So for me, I, Lavanya Tryon, declare that I will be a licensed professional counselor. Starting date, I will take the test in June to accomplish, to be able to, to influence and to be able to counsel more people and have a bigger reach um, from my counseling ministry. By June, by June 2021 is when I will have the test. So that's a goal. That's how we vision cast and that's how we carry forth our goal, okay? So my last thoughts to you, um, and I'm going to open the floor if we have a few moments for questions, but my la last thoughts for you. The first one is from Mark Twain. The two most important days of your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. So famous quote by Mark Twain that we all use, but I adapted that quote for myself. And I say the two most important days of everyone connected to your life are the day you find your identity and purpose and the day you start living it. So I'm going to repeat that again. The two most important days of everyone connected to your life are the day you find your identity and purpose and the day you start living it out. So this, ladies, is, is what I wanted to share with you about vision and casting your vision. I sincerely hope that you got something out of this and that this was um, beneficial for you to you. My name is Lavanya Chayan again, and I just I'm, I'm super excited about vision and, and giving this information. Um, and, and I want to hear any questions or thoughts that you may have. Do we have any thoughts or any questions? I have a, I have a question. Um, what would you, um, how would you, how, what advice would you give someone who has the vision, but seems to, um, how would you, how, what advice would you give to like help not lose sight of that vision? Like when life happens, like Corona and like the capital and all this stuff is going on, how, what advice would you give someone like me on how to, how not to lose sight of that vision and to keep staying motivated to accomplish that goal? That's a great, great question. So what I would say first for any vision, you got to figure out your why. So whatever that mm -hmm. vision is, what is my why? And your why has to be so strong that if you do not accomplish this vision, it almost makes you want to throw up. Like it makes you sick. And if you say, this is my why, then Anytime something happens that kind of discourages you, like Corona, like business not going, um, especially in, any of us that are entrepreneurs, business not going the way you thought it would go because of, of Corona, then you can say, what is my why? What was the why for creating this business? What was the why for casting this vision? And if I could say why, then I can still pivot in another direction to still get to my goal. So I can, it may take me a little bit longer. It may look different. It's kind of like for us in Houston, you got... 15 ways to get to work, hmm. right? And you, but you always drive the same route. Why? Because it's familiar. But what happens mm -hmm. if there's a roadblock on that route? Are you just not going to go to work? I mean, I don't have that luxury, right? Um, you're going to figure out another route to go to work. And so it's the same thing with your vision. If you hit a roadblock in your vision, you still have a, I still got to get there. Like, cause my why is still waiting on me. So I still got to get there. So I'm going to accept this roadblock. I can it's okay to feel all my feelings. So I'm frustrated, I'm upset, I'm angry. If I need to have a, a, a five minute pity party, I'm gonna have it and I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna fix my crown and I'm gonna go on about my business and I'm gonna get to wherever my vision is. So that's what I say for you. If you um, if you face a roadblock or if you face something that kind of detoured you, figure out another way to get to that vision, but hold, hold tight. That's the one thing that you hold tightly to. Hold loosely to your vision or to your path of your vision, hold tightly to your why. And if you figure out that why, then anything that comes up will, won't deter you because I got to get there because this is my why. I hope I answered that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Welcome. That was a really good topic, man. That mm -hmm. really, that was some facts. I, I like the part about um, whenever we like something in someone else, it's because it is a part of us that we see in them. And also mm -hmm. the same on the flip side is always two sides to the same corn, right? right? That's what my grandmother would say. Now, Lavanya, 
Yes, How, what was the process of getting to that place where you say, okay, you know what? My why is important. And no matter what my setbacks are, um, no matter what my delays are, how did you get to that point where your why was solidified? Um, well, I think for me, one of the things that I've always been passionate about singles mm -hmm. ministry and, and women and empowering mm -hmm. women. And for me, the reason that my why became so solidified is because I spent my most of my adult life finding my identity in relationships. So I was defined by who I was in a relationship with, which is evidenced by me about to marry a guy that I didn't love because I felt like that validated me. So when I got to my why of saying that I didn't understand my worth, I didn't understand my validation doesn't come from without, but it comes from within and above. Once I got to that clear cut why of that's who I'm, I'm validated, I had to reach and grab other women. I had to, 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 to show them that no, like if you're married, mm -hmm. amazing. But if you're single, amazing. Like both, both, neither one of them is less than. And mm -hmm. so my why became so strong because society and especially, and I, I know that this re your, your organization reaches so many people, but especially women of color. We get our validation sometimes from our family, from friends, from whoever. We get that mentality that if we're not a mother and a wife, like when you're going to have some babies, when you're going to bring a husband, why you can't keep a man, you know, when you're going to get mm -hmm. a, a baby or a man, we don't care which one, which order. Like, that's what my family does to me. And, and so... <laughs> It's like, I was, I was sucked into that validation. So because I was strong enough to find my, my, my purpose outside of that, then I, I cannot allow other women to not. So that, that's what got my why so solidified once I got ready to marry a guy that I didn't love and then um, getting divorced from, um, I recently got divorced, getting divorced from a man that didn't love me. Um, I had to go back and re-secure my why of why, because otherwise this would have, that, that my divorce would have destroyed me. Like I would be in somebody's institute. Um, but because I ended up realizing how secure I had become in myself, it was, it was not easy, but it was a pivot. And my why was strong enough that I can't preach what I'm not living to, to, to what I'm not willing to live. So I had to live it and I had to get back there. I, I can so relate. I, I always, you know, there's a, a familiar adage and it says that, you know, you're going through this for someone else. Yeah. And I just, in, in certain seasons, I'm going to be honest, I was like, I don't want to go through this for Jesus, anybody pick else. somebody else. I don't even want to go through it for myself. Yeah. So really getting to that point to say, you know what? there most of the problems in the world we kind of all share some aspect of problems there there isn't anything new under the sun right so a lot of what you just said make, made me want to get up and run around this this studio because i'm telling you the death of some things in our lives is just as real as the death of physical things in our lives and we don't realize that that a dream a goal if it if life seems to like kill it that can take us into a place of mourning and sometimes we stay in those places too long mm -hmm. and we don't really fall back on our why and say okay well this is why i did this mm -hmm. i'm doing this to help people so if people hurt me then i understand that that those are just those people Right. My overarching why is to help people. So I have to keep going no matter what the situation or the season is. So, and I, I'm just going to can I say one more thing about what you just said? Because that's so powerful. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. So what I what I experienced, so you made a comment about how um, emotional pain is sometimes as, as, as hard as physical pain. Psychologically, actually, emotional pain is worse than physical pain. Because what happens with a physical pain, if I break my arm, when my arm is healed, I might have a little bit of a memory of that, of that break or how much that pain I was in at that moment, but I can't really feel it. But emotional pain, once you get hurt emotionally, emotionally, your mind can take you back to that moment every single time. And it will feel like the first break. It will feel like the first 
uh, it will feel so painful. So I feel like for us, we have to get emotionally healed. We have to get mentally healed. Like, especially women that have con gone through. Now I have a heart for women that um, are divorced because I'm, I'm divorced. I've walked through that aspect of it. And I still believe that my love story is out there, right? Um, I don't need a, a prince to come save me. I just need a man to run alongside of me. You know what I'm saying? So if we can get that, then, and, and we can understand that aspect of it, then we can get to our healing. Then we can get to our, our emotional um, place of, of rescue for ourselves. And that's really what's so powerful for, for me is that emotional healing is get to the place where you heal. I always say that I'm the only ex that I've been in every relationship. I'm the consistent ex, right? So if, if every relationship that I consider failed, I'm the only, cons I'm the common denominator. So I was in every one of those relationships. So I'm the only one that I can fix. Yes, I can look at other situations. Like when I was an ex-girlfriend or ex-wife or ex-fiance, I can look at other situations and say how foolish those dudes were. But the reality is, is I can't go change them. I can only change me. So as women, we have to learn and we have to grow from those areas. And that comes, like you just said, I'm so happy that you said it, from that mental unblock. Like we have to get ourselves mentally healthy and mentally well and emotionally healthy before we can reach out and, and grasp um, the rest of our vision. So it starts with us first internally. Okay, and tell everybody where they can go and follow you so that they can, can continue this conversation with you because you have a lot of um, wisdom that I know you're um, constantly imparting to those that are, you know, plugged in with you. So really quickly before we move on mm -hmm. to Miss Alyssa with ambition, um, can you just tell us how we can go and network and plug in with you? Awesome. Yes. So my name is Love. Every, social media everywhere is Lavanya R. Tryon. So L-A-V-O-N-I-A-R-T-R-Y-O-N. So I made it pretty easy. So you can find me on any social media platform by my, my name. My website is um, LavanyaRTryon.com. So you can connect with me there, Instagram, Facebook. Um, people have been telling me to get on TikTok, but I was like, grown people get on TikTok? So I guess, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, but um, any any social, social media platform, you can find me there, Lavanya R. Tryon. I'd love to connect with you all. Thank you so much for coming to the stage and helping us really dissect what vision is and really how to implement that into our journey where we're trying to go. And um, we're going to keep moving forward. Um, I'm going to welcome Miss Alyssa R. Jones. She's going to talk about ambition and in the importance of ambition and how ambition can actually serve your journey. Welcome to the stage. Um, can you hear me now? Okay, thank you for having me. I'm always excited when you reach out to me about, you know, doing these platforms. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm a speaker, but I was just a student. The Vanya brought that, okay? Like so many life experiences that us as women connect as. And I just seen so many things in what she said that I could continue to use to grow. But we're going to talk about ambition. And I'm excited about this topic because I have some personal experiences that I was able to pull from with preparing for this. So I want to talk to you ladies and ask you, have you ever asked yourself, what is your life purpose? I know you have been through a lot of situations where you are sitting there trying to figure out why am I here? What is my life purpose? So I want to explain to you to find your life purpose, you need to really figure figure out how you can best use your passions and your skills to achieve your unique goals and solve your unique problems because we all have unique problems even though they may be one the same and taking steps to find your life purpose finding your life purpose is a lifelong journey it's okay to take it one step at a time but it is normal to pause and reevaluate yourself regularly one of the ways to find your life purpose is to find out what drives you and that's one of the things that I had to do. When I was a teenager, um, I was at a party and I came upon a friend of mine. Her head was cast downward. Her bangs was covering the front of her eyes and she was squeezing her hand tight in her fist. As I approached, I noticed something red on her hand and it was blood. I rushed over to her, I grabbed her hand, demanding that she let me help her. Because sometimes when people get into their situations, they don't want any help. Finally, after much prodding, she opened her hand 
and laying in her palm was a piece of glass glass that she had been squeezing hard as she possibly could it was then i realized that she was intentionally making her hand bleed she was so unhappy that she squeezed that piece of glass until blood was dripping on the floor i didn't know it at the time but this moment was the first in a series of moments that would show me what my life purpose was. In the years that followed, I saw scars of self-burning, the glazed over eyes that come with extensive drug use, and the skin that hangs off a body that is intentionally being starved. I witnessed the depths of depression, the heights of mania, suicide attempts, and near overdoses. I'm sorry, I get so emotional. It turns out that a person can only see so much pain before becoming driven to stop it. That's what happened to me. So one way to find out your purpose is to ask yourself this question. What pain or injustice or unhappiness have you witnessed that you just can't live with? Is there anything that touches you so deeply that it drives you? Often a powerful purpose can come from powerful pain. And I want you to write that down as I say it again. A powerful purpose can come from powerful pain. So we're going to talk about what is ambition. Ambition is related to our feelings. And a lot of people doesn't real, don't realize that it does, but it relates to our feelings, our emotions, and our desires. It's about energy necessary to chase after your goals, whether it's personal, social, or in the professional field. An ambition person is one who tries to overcome challenges, but put strategies in place to grow in practice, into practice. So being ambitious, am, ambitious means cultivating a desire to, uh, for transformation and realizing your projects, plans, and strategies that are created, aiming at a certain goal in your life. That might be personal, that might be graduating college, or even in your professional, or as an entrepreneur, like starting a business. Deep down, ambition is translated into self-esteem. Believing in individual potential and that you have the ability to win. When we are ambitious, we can fully, fully, fully make use of our potential. See, I'll use a very recent personal experience for me. My divorce and my decision to walk away from an abusive marriage, that was a tough decision because I believed that the behavior I was receiving was love. My self-esteem was shattered. My belief in myself was shattered. And because I believed the things that were said to me and about me, I didn't believe I had the ability to win after my divorce. See, I had to pull on the ambition deep down inside that I allowed to be buried so deep. I was at rock bottom and I learned very, very quickly who were my friends and who were not. I refused to allow what my ex-husband said about me to define me. My ex-husband, I refused to allow for him to win playing with my heart and my mind. I wanted transformation from a failed marriage to live in my full potential after the divorce. So the importance of ambition, having a, an ambition is the more, most important thing you will have in your life. There's nothing more attractive than an ambitious person. A person who doesn't have an ambition is nothing more than a dead man. I'll say that again. A person who doesn't have an ambition is nothing more than a dead man. Having a goal and a dream is what keeps you going. If you have ambition that I want to be successful, it will always remain in your mind, rather it be in your subconscious mind. That spark of achieving something big, that desire of being at the top, that fear of being average would scare you and your body will work according to that. Dreams and desire are the two things that make a person. Fear is another thing that makes a person achieve high milestones in life. But having an ambition is good. But if you have an ambition, you should also work real hard to achieve it. 
You shouldn't work your tail off until you get what you want out of life. All other things are secondary. It's just you and your dreams. Wake up every day thinking about what you want and you go and get it. Great things will come to you. Definitely as they come to you, they will also take time. So you just have to be patient. I want you to always dream big. Big dreams, big thinking, big thinking, big person. It's simple. A person once said to me, everything you want to ask of life cannot be given by anyone else but yourself. So don't ask, period. Do, be, get it yourself. Have ambitions, have goals, work according to them. Achieve big. Get a life that you have never, ever dreamed of. I want you to be strong. No one is going to be with you forever. I'll say that again. No one is going to be with you forever. There would be days that you would have to walk alone. See, I thought my mother was going to be with me forever. She died in 2013. I thought my biological father and my stepfather was going to be with me forever. They died in 2019. When I got married, I thought I was going to be married forever. He walked out of my life in 2020. Never be scared of walking alone. And if you ever feel tired, learn to reset, but not quit. Because see, that's life. So I'm going to teach you about ambition, adding action, which equals your goals. James 2.17 tells us faith without works is dead. I know y'all hear that every day. So when we talk about ambi ambition, it has to be paired with action, right? So to reach any goals in your life, for your life, you have to have ambition. Ambitious people are more likely to set goals and strive for excellence. But many people set goals but do not have the energy to put making those goals come into fruition. So we just had New Year's. How many of y'all had a New Year's resolution? Every year we see, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to find a boo. I'm going to new year, new me. All of these goals we have at the beginning of the year, and by the time we hit February, we haven't achieved one. <laughs> so truly ambitious people not only make goals, but they also take definitive action to achieve those goals. So I want to leave you with five action steps to refocus if you're not focused on whatever goals you may have. So step one, and you can write this down, write a list of the type, top 10 most important goals you would like to achieve for 2021. Step two, I want you to write which one of those 10 is the most important to you and your why. Step three, I want you to write down a specific timeline for you to achieve that goal. Step four, I want you to write down your strengths and your weaknesses. See, this is important and a lot of people do not access this when they're doing their goals. You wanna focus on about three of each. I want you to write down how your strengths can help you achieve this goal and how you plan to overcome those weaknesses. See, a lot of people will talk about their strengths, but they don't talk about their weaknesses and we all have them. So you have to understand how you can overcome those weaknesses. And step five, I want you to write the actions that you need to take in order to achieve your goal. Because again, you can have ambition all day long, but if you don't have the action that you need to put into play, then you'll never, get to your goals. So I want to leave you with this. I want you to reach down in each experience that you had in your life. And when you have hit rock bottom, you always understand that God always puts you rock bottom to understand that no matter what you go through, you have to seek him. So once you seek him, you can understand the pull of that ambition to get you where you need to be. And I want to thank you, Shantae, again, for having me on this platform. We can open the floor to any questions, comments, or concerns about ambition.
what was the um I know you talked to, about your personal experiences mm -hmm. in life and man I mean to be able to have that bounce back um we we talk about a lot about that snap back right mm -hmm. I got that snap back well what about in your goals do you have a mm -hmm. bounce back mentality because we know it doesn't matter how good you look how good you smell how pretty your smile is how articulate you may be in your speech right if you don't have ambition none of that is going to matter in the big in the big grand scheme of things so right. what point did you just say you know what Alyssa? you know what hey this is what it is but it doesn't have to stay this way what was your mindset during that that point in your life? My mindset was um, not allowing somebody to kick me while I was down. I don't know if you ladies have ever seen the movie Enough with um, that movie. Um, it pulled so many things out of me. And it was the thing in the moment in that movie where he had his foot on her neck and kicked her while it was down and and she pulled on her daughter she pulled on how many times he hit her to get back up so <clears throat> when I was at my lowest I found out who was in my corner and who left me and in those moments I pulled on that very thing that said I'm not going to let him win I'm going to get back up um, another thing that I pulled on was the things and I get so emotional the things my father said to me um, before he passed away was don't ever let a man tell you who you are or define you and he had to tell me so many times during my marriage that um, that wasn't love it was control but I didn't know the difference because see he left my mother when I was eight years old so my mother um, turned into a single mother so I didn't get the opportunity to see it but I didn't have I didn't have to use that excuse as a crutch because I didn't have to see it. So what I had to do was get out there after this divorce and really learn what love is. And what I did learn is that it started with me because I allowed those things happen to me because I didn't, I didn't love myself and I believed everything that he said to me. So once I was able to find self-love, and this actually goes back to Lavinia, what she said. Some of the things and the characteristics that I've seen in my husband was what I believed in myself. So once I started changing my mindset and learning what self-love was, I was able to attract a man that not only loves me, but I was able to decipher you know what I'm saying? What true love was and to be in a position like I had to tell him, I don't know what a healthy relationship is. So to be in it, it's foreign to me, but it feels good because I'm at peace. I'm not arguing. I'm not, you know, fussing and I'm not fighting. This, this new normal to me is amazing. And it all started with me. Awesome. I love that because, you know, it could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be your boss, it could be any any influence, it could even be social media, anything mm -hmm. that influences the way you see yourself, your self perspective, you know, perspective. How do right. you see yourself? How what do I really believe? Sometimes we don't even realize what we truly believe about mm -hmm. ourselves, like to the mm -hmm. core. Do you right. really feel like you can accomplish all of those goals? And some of us might be at the place, I like what you said, Alyssa, you make a list of your goals. You have to really make it very plain. The Bible says, make it plain. Mm -hmm. Because if you complicate it, how are you going to be successful in the, in the follow through of that faith? How are you right. really going to be successful in the, in the process of it? Because that's where you really get to see Okay, these are the areas that I need to improve so that I can be more effective or I can work more efficiently or I can be more productive. A lot of us just want to have a list and be like, I got goals. I got goals. I'm goal oriented. I got goals. Mm -hmm. But what are you doing to really accomplish those goals and really set yourself up to be the right. person at the end who accomplishes those goals actually be about the goals because right. a lot of times we're, we're always in what we're trying to do and we don't really focus on what we should be who we should right. be who should we be like you said 
it talks it starts with ourselves in love and love translates more than just in in relationships it also translates in our business relationships too if you mm -hmm. really don't have a lot of love to offer then you're not going to be pleasant in business meetings you're not mm -hmm. going to be pleasant when you're trying to negotiate because you have to be able at the to, at the end of the day to say you know what i did this in love love of passion love of self love of purpose and love of my assignment. We all right. have an assignment. We're all here to do something. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, you know, y'all, I say it all the time because it's true. I'm all about transparency. And sometimes the Lord will give you an assignment that you don't really love. Right. He'll tell you to forgive. <laughs> and you like, for what? <laughs> Just bottom line, like, Come on. for what? Like, Give me like one solid reason why I should forget this. I, come on, I, I'm gonna take a little, we're gonna have a little break here. I want to know, have you ever had an assignment that you did not love, but it really helped you to kind of see yourself in a manner where you could really look for that transformation. Y'all can unmute yourselves. We'll take, just like do a little talk break. Let's like check in with each other. Shante, that's powerful because that forgiveness thing, like honey, like, um, and Alyssa, like, I love you. Like, I love you already. Like, like that. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love it, ladies. Like that, <laughs> like powerful. And, and what you're saying, I mean, our, our, our stories are so similar because my divorce was finalized mm -hmm. in 2022, but um, like that assignment, like you're saying, like forgive someone or um, like, okay, like mm -hmm. apologize. Wait. Yeah, because if they put but, me in front of my because, ex husband, I'm gonna sit there with a deer with headlights <laughs> talking about what? Well, well right. God, I know you playing. Look, so just let me open the white light. Open the white light. Just <laughs> let me go. On, let me go and walk through. Like but God, I gotta get my phone charger. <laughs> Like, did you forget me, what he did? Like, let me, right, right. Let me get my phone charger, God. But just go on, take me, take me to the light. Just take me to the light. <laughs> Tyra, I see you have your mic unmuted. Have you ever Colette got her mic unmuted? Y'all all got an assignment. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> like that's just open platform here. Y'all chime in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I mean, I've been so blessed um, by LaVanya and Alicia. I, I'm, I'm telling you, you're actually helping me. Um, I can remember uh, my ex-husband. Um, we had been, the well, we, I've never was divorced. He's actually deceased in 2005. Uh, we oh, were not I together at the time. We, thank you. <laughs> we're not, we weren't together at the time, but um, I can remember, and we had been you know, apart for year, some years. And I remember going over to his sister's one Thanksgiving and she walked me out and all of a sudden she's like, well, you know, you have to forgive. And I'm in my heart, I have forgiven. You know, I, I mean, I don't know where she pulled that from, but I think sometimes we think we have forgiven. You know, we go through the motion and then we have to revisit that sometime because it's like, have you really forgiven? And so that was the situation with I in. So I had to get on my knees and make sure that that was a forgiving part, you know, so, but, you know, I definitely yeah. understand. <laughs> forgive I remember, what about process. you? We got to understand that it's a process. Like it when is. we forgive, forgiveness is instantaneous. Like when I ask mm -hmm. God for forgiveness, he instantly forgives mm -hmm. me. But the damage that whatever that mm -hmm. hurt or that pain was that caused, that has to be a constant healing. Mm -hmm. So we think, right. we think the difference is forgiveness and healing. Like I can forgive mm -hmm. this person, but I haven't healed yet from what this person right. is. Mm -hmm. that's and so good. I have that's to good. constantly release this person over mm -hmm. and over again. And that's what the, that's where the painful is because it's like, mm -hmm. well, I don't want to release them because what, like, you remember what they did. You remember this, mm -hmm. you remember that. Cause that, I ain't forget. That, that's the hard part. And that, that no, is the hard. Yeah. Tyra, you got the floor. You had, think, you, you um, unmuted yourself. What was, what I, was a point where you were like, you know what, this assignment is a little bit, uh, a little bit outside of my comfort zone or wheel, myself will. What was that moment for you? I think for me, um, I, I thought that I had forgiven my ex-husband and I, it had been years 10 or more years since we had seen him, but it wasn't until my son wanted to cultivate a relationship with him. And I, it, it angered me because I'm like, do you remember the things he did to us? Why would you want that? But I realized that I had to allow 
my kids to go through the steps because they needed closure. And it ended up, he ended up hurting him, but I knew that I had to allow him to go through those steps so he could know in himself that, okay, I know my personal experience that, you know, this was not the relationship that I wanted, but he had to go through that. And I could not protect him from that. So it's, it's hard when somebody hurts you, but it's even harder because I wanted to fight him, <laughs> you know, for her, my child, you know, but I know that he had to go through that. Right. And mine was actually in business. You know, um, I'm also divorced. You know, that was a whole, you know, that's a whole nother segment of how to rebound. We'll go through that later. But um, mine was actually in business just to give another, you know, angle of, uh, forgiveness. And I felt like I had really been uh, treated unfairly, overlooked, minimalized, you know, so, excuse me, minimized, you know, so I had to really uh, dig deep with that one, because the Lord was like, I need you to forgive, because there are things I need you to do in this company, but you can't do it if your heart is not right. And you need to kind of deflate a little bit of that ego, Whatever you feel like somebody deserves from you, I deserve from you too. So even though, you know, I feel like they should have, for, you know, apologized, offered me an apology. The Lord was like, I need you to offer me an apology for just holding this, this person to the stake when I asked you, when you know I asked you to forgive them and you did not. So a lot of times we're, we're expecting, you know, even in business things that, would go right and, you know, follow this, you know, alignment or this path, particular path. And we don't even realize that we may not even be forgiving our coworkers when we should, or our boss, when, you know, they're, in, they're put in a position to, uh, you know, make, make plans, make goals that we may not always agree with. And then sometimes we have to have a bigger perspective, like, they have a boss too. They have a boss that's telling you what to do. And, you know, it may not be comfortable for you. They may not articulate it well or, you know, ask you to do things nicely. But at the end of the day, you can only like we we the kind of theme of today is really working on self. What are the things that you can control about yourself? And I can't control how other people treat me, but I can set boundaries, very clear boundaries. And then when they cross them, I have a choice to you know, keep going in love and kindness and forgiving or kind of just holding on to that and letting that poison me. And those are really the, gonna be the things that really delay your advancement in that company. I, I'm, it's very rare that I feel like we can cancel blessings. I mean, yes, we could, you know, there are some opportunities we miss but I really feel like if your life's purpose, if God created you to do something, he is going to get it done through you. It may, he may have to push you and he may have to pull you along the path. I always say, don't go kicking and screaming. Just go and go. Wherever he's trying to take you, just go ahead and go. Like LaVonia said, you got to be able to pivot. You have to be able to let go. And sometimes forgiveness is the release of things. And you can release that anger. You can release that hurt. But then at the same time, this is the beauty of forgiveness. You release the things that God wants to do for you. You can, re he released that next step. So um, Alyssa, can you tell us um, how can we keep this connection going with you? How can we follow you on like social media, website, any of those things where you have connections built in for people? Yeah, I am on social media under Alyssa Rochelle. I dropped the last name. So Alyssa Rochelle on Facebook, Instagram, however you want to find me. I'm very responsive. Awesome. Thank you for again for, you know, blessing us with some personal testimonies, because a lot of times you think, oh, my God, my life is, you know, not at a place where I can really be effective. And that's not necessarily true. Wherever Correct. you are, your life means something. It has Correct. value, even if it's the darkest season. So we're going to do is, I'm going to call to the stage Tanja Carr, and we're going to be talking about um business confidence. So it's a lot of what we've already been talking about, 
um, right now, just being confident and stepping out. Now, you and I had a conversation beforehand. And what I love the most about you was that you were very transparent in our conversation and where how you got to where you were and where you are excuse me encouraging people so first can you please start off with um kind of like give us a little insight as to what got you to the place where you can counsel um other women and men going through life uh, first of all, I want to say thank you all for having me. I am so honored and, and grateful for real. Um, I've learned uh, a lot today. And if I get emotional, please forgive me because this is real hard. Uh, I liked uh, what I've heard. And, and I'm the probably the baby of the group as far as business. I'm just now starting out with the business. Um, I'm an LCDC counselor, licensed chemical dependence counselor. I am a clinical certified uh, anger solution therapist, trauma-informed therapist, and a uh, de uh, drug offender education facilitator. I don't say that to impress you. I say that to tell you uh, I had to have some confidence, some amb ambition, and some vision behind all of that because where I come from um, was not too pretty. Um, I start off when I speak always with a title of naked with all of my clothes on, meaning that this is not some rated G situation that I have come through. I, I grew up, you know, in a, in a, in a fairly um, nice home. You know, my mom and grandma catered to, to who I thought I was. And uh, then life showed up through an ex-husband. And uh, then I became kidnapped by crack cocaine for multiple years. Um, when you say been there, done that, that's what I've done. Uh, prostituted myself, stole from granny, who I love dearly, mistreated seven children. Other people in my family had to take care of those children. And I'm real grateful for those people because those people were uh, the tool in which uh, formulated the lady that I am today. Um, when I talk about confidence, um, I had to, and then we talked about forgiveness earlier. I want to just touch on that a minute. It took a lot to forgive me. I can forgive other people, but it was real hard to forgive me for some of the things that I had to go through through being kidnapped in my addiction. Society says that motherhood is supposed to be the greatest thing in the world. For me, motherhood was probably the most devastating things through addiction and the harm that I caused my children. No mother takes people's uh, children's Christmas gifts that other people have bought them and sold them and, and put empty boxes back up under the tree. And, and, and no, no, society doesn't understand that, but that's addiction. That's what I was. And that's, you know, some of the things that I still sometimes have a hard time forgiving myself for. And so that sometimes bring about lack of confidence. I had to learn by starting a new business in counseling and in anger management resolution and trauma-informed therapy, that there's three words that starts with C. And I want you to write these down. There's three words that starts with C that most of us in business or in our personal lives get mixed up. Confidence, cockiness, and conceitedness. My addiction took me through so many cocky moves and cocky uh, things where I thought I had it going on. Three hots and a cot always was my end story. Five times in TDC, 21 treatment facilities. And I have the audacity to think I have some confidence. That was cockiness because confidence 
is asking for help. Confidence is saying, I can't. God can, please help. Confidence is sitting on a platform with ladies like you and telling you all, hey, I'm the baby of the group, please help me. Because I don't have all the answers. I got, I've moved into business by accident. <laughs> And I tell that I tell that as a true story. I moved into this field of study by accident. Life experience said you're going to do something. Because nobody else can understand how just saying, waking up one morning saying, uh, husband, I'm going to wake up and sell all the stuff in my home. Children. I'm gonna give you all to CPS, probation officer. I, I'm gonna, not gonna do that again. People with normal activities in everyday lives can't understand that. But one addict to another addict with some education can understand. And that's why I got into this field of study to help those that are struggling through addiction. It don't even have to be addiction because we all have issues. Issues of, of one nature or another, lack of self-esteem, uh, self-harm, uh, cockiness, conceitedness, selfishness, self-centeredness, all of those I, my, and me does not elude confidence. The confidence that I have today is in God. Jeremiah 29 and 11. I give him my plans. He work them out for my best interest. Because guys, I don't sometimes I, I forget what my best interest is. I think I know what's good for me. And I travel down a road on Jensen and Liberty Road thinking that was good for me. And it wasn't. What's good for me today is leaning and depending on ladies like you. What's good for me is waking up every morning and saying, God, please interrupt my remarkable plans and ideas. Because without you, I can do nothing. But with you, you promised me that I can do all things. And I hold on to that. I hold on to what is so dear to me. That's God first, family, and friends. I have to have some friends that are on the same page as me. I loved it when I heard the ladies talk about divorce. Man, look here. When I hear people talk about divorce, I, I, I just get a new mindset. Because see, this is my truth. I don't, I don't even remember getting divorced. So I don't know the pain of that. All I remember is that I was ready to go because I needed another one. Not another man, but, but another substitute for a substance that I couldn't control. So today, my relationships with people are this, to do no harm. That's in relationship. That's in my business affairs. That's on this platform. That's on my everyday living. God, please don't let me hurt your people. Examine me to the best of my ability to make sure that I don't get those, those three C's mixed up. If I become cocky, TLC counseling service will go in the shitter. Um, if I can, don't, if I get too high and mighty and let the business run me and forget that I'm just me, I'll lose it within two to three years. I never wanna make, let a position make me. I wanna make the position. And the only position I have today is to do, is to be helpful and to be of service to anyone, including myself. Be mindful not to take another drug pill, no matter what I feel, what I think, or who enters or harm me. You know that, you know, I was, I grew up with this saying, you know, respect those that respect you. Y'all heard that before, right? Treat others as, as you want to be treated. I'm sorry, I don't believe that today. 
I'm going to treat people the way God says treat them in spite of how you treat me. And that's a big thing to do. Because some days, <laughs> I don't want to do that, Shantae. I just don't want to treat you right. Because I've forgotten about the confidence that I have in something greater than me. Because no matter what you do to me, God has positioned me to be better and greater, no matter what you do, what you say, or how I feel. In recovery or in the field of study of substance, we always hear this saying, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Try this one on for size. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over, becoming comfortable with the results. How many times have we gotten comfortable in what we have not done? I've heard it on this platform. We became comfortable living in situations we knew we knew long time ago we should have been out of. I became comfortable not always working for someone else and not myself. I became comfortable going to TDC multiple times. Give me my, my, my green blanket, my bologna sandwich, and let me lay down. I became comfortable with going to treatment, getting three hots in a cot, getting my titties and my booty back and going back on the stroll again. And when I became comfortable, when the pain became great enough, I got enough confidence in myself to ask God to help me move forward. So today I don't operate in, in self-centeredness. I try not to, but I will, because I haven't forgotten. I don't I try not to operate in conceitedness because I'm nobody. I try not to, uh, I try to soothe conf I mean, uh, confidence in others. And the confidence that I have is only in God. Because most days, talking about most days, I have to ask him to hide me from the enemy. And who guess who the enemy is? Me. I'm the enemy thinking I'm knowing what's best for me. So my business, it, my business confidence, ladies, if I left it up to, up to me, I don't have it. I'm just telling you the truth. But in business confidence, I have great confidence in ladies like you and a God that loves me in spite of me. And I just follow the platform with a lot of ambition, a lot of vision from others. And I just follow clear, cut directions from all of my supporters that I love and love me, my family who has just stuck by me. Man, if I tell you I got a family that's stuck by this here person, this cockroach living individual, and I love them dearly. And I appreciate you all for having me on. And you can reach me at TLC Counseling Service I'm on Facebook, Tonja Carr, um, and that's, you know, uh, when uh, Shante talks about uh, technology, if I tell you I'm struggling in the technology area, I'm struggling. <laughs> My website is www.tlccounselingservice.com, uh, and I thank you all so much. That was amazing. I know... Um... The, just the truth of the story, because I think, you know, we all have our own truths that we don't share. I mean, some of our lives, it, it's pretty ugly. I know for me, it was, it's very ugly, very, um, some cases people would consider their past or their past experiences dirty. You know, it just depends on how that person perceives their their past experiences. And when you network with therapists or counselors, you definitely, I like what you said, Tanja, you want to make sure you're going to someone who can empathize, who understand your dilemma, because it's from that place of understanding that they have gained the knowledge and the wisdom. And with anything, you know, whenever you're going out, because in every platform, in every show I, I ever talk about, I always mention therapy. You know, just taking advice. Some of us getting therapy from our friends and our family, which is great. 
but we have to make sure that they're coming from a place where they truly understand your problem. And they're not just trying to give you advice to make you feel good because there's a difference between feeling good and being good. They are different. Feeling good, is, you can you can find, like you said, Tanja, some type of uh, temporary substance. We can all, you know, get lit. That's, that's the word, get lit. We can get <laughs> lit and that makes us feel good but we can even feel good and not be good at the same time. You could be miserable getting drunk. You could be miserable um, out there, you know, just living the way you want to live because it's that temporary feeling of satisfaction. So really getting down to the core of it. And that was the whole purpose of today's um, social was in her shoes because I wanted to start the year off not necessarily challenging everybody to be a brand new person. I don't agree with the notion, new me, brand new year, brand new me. Sometimes you just need to continue where you are and keep going deeper into that. Because if, I, if every time, every year I'm starting brand new, I'm really not getting deep into the thing that I started. I'm just starting it. It's like putting something in the oven and say, you know what, I'm a, today I'm gonna cook a new meal. I'm just gonna throw some meat in the oven. You're not seasoning it. You're not letting it set up overnight. Hi, y'all cook over, y'all cooking up. You know, get the season. You got to let it marinate sometimes. You got to let it sit in the refrigerator a couple of days, really, so that season get down in it. So then when you cook it and you taste it, it is fully prepared. We want that um, one and done type life when it comes to goal setting. Sometimes you need to start a thing. You need to season it with some knowledge, with some experience. And some of these experiences may take you five or 10 years before you get to the full actualization of that goal. I want to be able to teach the world. Took 10 years to build a platform, to get, wait, to get to an idea, to build a platform that was global. Because when I first got started, the internet and using social media like we use it wasn't really a thing. So you weren't hopping on Facebook lives, being able to talk to somebody in another state in another country. You were really networking with the people who were in your vicinity, whoever was closest to you, or whoever were friends with you on Facebook. And that's really how far your reach went unless you already had a global platform. But if you're building, sometimes those things that you're building take time you got to be patient you got to put some seasoning on that thing and if you don't know we we all you know all of us prepare meals sometimes you don't really you don't know how to make the thing you want to make so you look up the recipe and that's in business and in life if you don't know where to go from where you are then you look up the recipe the recipe is out there call a friend who's in business they say uh build in silence yeah that's good when you know what you're building. <laughs> but if you have no idea what you are building, you need to be vocal about getting the ingredients. What do I need to have a global platform? What do I need to start a business? What do I need to do to get over this divorce? What do I need to do to be a better person, to forgive more easily, to not pop off every time somebody say something to me? Because I was that person. I'm quiet. I, I see Levi, I see you back there. I'm quiet, but don't cross me. And usually it was only with a particular group of people. You cross me, it was me, and I'm be honest, y'all. It was me, and I let the women make it. But a man say something, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> but I know that I want to be married. And I, I, I like, you know, a lot of people, I didn't have the, the recipe or the blueprint for a healthy marriage. So I didn't get a chance to see that, but I do know what it takes now because I looked up the recipe. I was like, okay, well, yes. popping off, talk back, having something to say all the time is not an ingredient. Right. <laughs> Let's be, come on, you got to take that out. That's like <laughs> put a little bit of extra paprika in something. You don't even right. need paprika. What does paprika <laughs> even do? But anyway. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. Building in silence is good for when you know what you're building, you got your assignment, you got your ingredients, you boom, you're making it happen. Because you don't always need to be like 
uh, Tanja say, cocky. Sometimes we get, oh, I'm making this move. I'm making this move. And you just, you call it uh, just informing people, but really it can add, you can toe the line of cockiness. So sometimes mm -hmm. you do need to build in silence, but sometimes you need to go and snag that recipe whether it's right. therapy and getting somebody in there that can really help you with what you're trying to do because no one knows it all. And so one thing, even one thing that the person who is the most successful person you can think of right now. And I know we all know that person group of people, even they have places where they go and they reach out and they network and they pop, they, um, you know, populate with people who know more than them. Sometimes you need to be in rooms where you're not speaking, you're listening, you know, um, and there's this popular social media app that I have joined and I just go and I just bounce around in all the different rooms and I'm just listening. I'm just listening because sometimes we, when we're talking, we're not hearing, you know, we're not really listening. Let's be honest. So um, I really like that. Tanja, can you tell us one more time how we can follow you and like network with you and connect with you? One more time. www.tlccounselingservice.com. I'm on Facebook as Tanja, T-O-N-J-A, Carr, C-A-R-R. And the one thing that I really want to leave with you is that uh, all of us, all of us, everybody, has a past of some type, right? Let your let your past be, that wasn't a, a liability, but today let it be your asset to help Thank another you. individual. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. To help but another we're gonna individual. We're going to end the live feed. I thank you guys for, you know, tuning in with us. Um, if you're part of Women Empowering Change and you weren't able to make the social, we got it all laid out for you guys. We're going to dump this into our Women Empowering Change uh, member uh, Facebook page we have. Now, you're saying, what is mem Women Empowering Change membership? Well, it's a membership where we have a group of women that we're growing where we get together once a month and we, we have different topics that we talk about. There are uh, coaching services. I am offering coaches, free coaching services for Women Empowering Change members. Um, as COVID kind of lets up and we're able to do more, these will, our monthly meetings will trans, you know, send into actual in-person meetings, which I'm most excited for. Virtual, yes, it's good, but it's something about being in the same room with a person, getting that energy and really being able to say, hey, let me borrow you for a second and let me let me ask you about this or, you know, hey, can we talk afterwards? Really having that one-on-one -on -one kind of um, atmosphere. So you can plug in with us at womenempoweringchange.org or WECINC.org. We shorten it because we have a lot of things we're doing and the website name was too long. So that's a little nugget too. If you're building a website, make it to where people have the time to type it in and they remember it. But again, we'll meet up again next month, February. They're always the first of the month. So I believe that will be February 6th. Um, we'll meet up again at 11 a.m. Bye, y'all.